Well, if you're watching this now, it means my computer is still alive and hanging in there, and I can bring you the last segment of my previous episode. So stick around. So a viewer in England, Peter Dowd, sent me this set of stamps and suggested it would make a good research challenge for me. This is the set of four stamps issued by Great Britain in 1948 for the Summer Olympic Games held in London. Now, World War II ended in Europe in 1945, and the Olympics had already missed the Games in 1940 and 1944. In 1940, they were scheduled to be held in Tokyo. But of course, you know. And in 1944, they were scheduled for London. A venue had not yet been named for the 1948 Games. So in November of 1945, the chairman of the British Olympic Council traveled to Stockholm to lobby for London holding the Olympics in 1948. In June of 1946, after a vote among all the members of the International Olympic Committee, the Winter Games were awarded to uh, San Moritz, Switzerland, and London did get the 1948 Summer Games. But that was just the beginning. Now came the task of selling the games to the public. To that end, a press department was uh, formed in January of 1947 to aid the Olympic Committee in public relations and in preparations of the games. Now the public was far from you know reveling in fun and games at this time as the economy was still reeling from the effects of the war there was still rationing going on rationing had started back in january of 1940 and it was still going on at the end of the war and in fact rationing kept going until it was finally lifted in 1954. now at the time there were three distinct factions that were opposing the games. The first was a group that just felt flat out, there should be no games. What are you, what are you thinking of? The second group felt, well, yeah, games would be good, but maybe now's not the right time. And the third felt it was a good idea, but, you know, doubted their ability, you know, due to economic conditions, their ability to actually, you know, carry out the games. So, as I said, in January 1947, the press department was formed, but only weeks into their mission, the bottom fell out of their plans when probably the worst storm, the winter storm of the 20th century struck and just brought everything to a screeching halt. Snow shut down the roads, coal and petrol couldn't be delivered, train transportation was shut down, Food and water became scarce, and unemployment skyrocketed. In March, the weather finally turned, but brought new problems. While the snow melted, the ground was still frozen hard as concrete, and the water had nowhere to go but into the rivers, which caused flooding. And thousands of homes and food crops were damaged. Despite all the hardship, the Olympic Committee, with the aid of the press department, not only succeeded in selling the games to the public, but even those who were staunchly opposed to it came around to praising the games. And the 1948 Olympic Games can claim some of the best press coverage ever. Now the games were all held in Wembley Stadium due to the fact that there was no money available for new infrastructure. And because of all these you know, dire economic conditions at the time, the games came to be called the Austerity Games. So let's take a look at the stamps. At first, the post office didn't even think of a set of stamps as a big deal for the Olympic Games. They only thought, well, I guess, you know, other countries have been doing it, we should too. <laughs> and they decided on an issue of just two stamps, two and a half pence and a three pence stamp. Later on, they added two more, a sixpence and a one shilling value, along with an air letter sheet or an aerogram with the sixpence design. Thirteen artists submitted designs for consideration, and the king signed off on, you know, the ones that he approved of, and the specifications were set forth that, of course, the king's head had to 
appear prominently on the design. And while the king did not have to be shown wearing his crown, the crown still had to appear in the design in the same proportion as the king's head. Here are two designs that did not make the final cut. I really like that two and a half pence design and wish that would have made the final set. The first day of issue was July 29th, 1948, and the stamps went on sale across the UK. There was also an Olympic cancel created, but it was not available to the general public outside the uh, Olympic grounds. It was only used on mail processed on site from mail posted within the Olympic grounds. At the time, the post office had no philatelic division, so there were no provisions for you know, providing any special cancels or uh, first day covers for the general population. And the stamps were barely on sale for five months. They were withdrawn from sale on the 31st of December of 1948. Here we can see the printing quantities of each of the stamps. The Workhorse 2.5P stamp had a print run of 155 million stamps, while the 3 pence and 1 shilling values were each 32 million, and the 6 pence stamp had a printing of just over 24 million. With such high quantities printed, it's no surprise that this is a fairly inexpensive set with a Scott catalog value of just $7 and a retail value of considerably less than that. But as a record of an important and historic Olympic Games and as a symbol of the perseverance and dedication of a people, I believe this set belongs in the collection of every stamp collector. So thank you, Peter, for sending that set to me and suggesting the research. And if you enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification button, and any other buttons you might find around there. <laughs> so until next time, happy stamping!